Hi, I'm Robin Kolner and I am your instructor for social media marketing. I created this video to walk you through the process of how to set up a Facebook page for a business and organization or for yourself if you're an entrepreneur. We are also going to cover the various aspects of how you manage a business page. The first thing I'm going to do is actually move you over to my personal page. The personal page is actually called the personal profile. All of you have a personal profile when you set up an account on Facebook. That is actually the best way to set up a business page because every business page needs to have an administrator that is assigned to it. I also will be showing you certain things on the personal profile that relate to how business pages work. Business pages, organization pages, are always designed to have individuals like the page, become fans of the page, and interact with the page. And that's the reason why I will be bouncing back and forth between business and personal. So, as you notice, this is my personal Facebook profile. I have a picture of myself that's inviting for someone to look at that's easy to see, and a family picture which represents something related to me personally. If we go to the menu bar at the very top of the Facebook profile, you will notice a little black arrow. This particular arrow is the best way to begin to set up a business page because you'll notice it shows that I have a business page for my agency business, which is Digistar Media, and then right underneath it is the word create a page. And underneath that is manage the pages that you've already created. So let's get started with create a page. When I clicked on create a page, I am then prompted by Facebook to choose what kind of a business page I want to set up. Here's our choices. It is either a local business, that would be a shoe repair, a restaurant, a retail boutique, or something with a storefront, a pet grooming business that has hours of operation uh, and that will appear on various local directories. A company, organization, or institution is a larger business, let's say a bank. Um, as an agency, I have an opportunity to set myself up either as a local business or place or as a company organization or institution. Remember that when, this is important and will become increasingly more important because of this search bar. Every major social media site has a search engine built into it, so too does Facebook. Facebook's search engine is now called Graph Search. And when people search for businesses and search for your particular page or the page that you're representing or working on, you will want them to be able to find it. So therefore, it's important to recognize what you want to be known as. A brand or product would be Coca-Cola, for example, Red Bull, something that, that the U.S. Olympics is an organization. Macy's is both a local business as well as a company. Some of the brands within that Macy's sells may be considered a brand or a product. Now you can also set up a fan page if you are a rock star, a movie star, a celebrity, a public figure, a government employer, uh, if you're an entertainment company, or if you are a nonprofit that is building a community around a cause. Let's set up a local business. In setting up a local business, the second step is to choose the category that you represent. This is an important change that Facebook made several years ago, but was not available when Facebook pages were first invented or first made available. The interesting thing about the page when we get to set up is that in August of 2016, the layout of Facebook business pages changed. By the way, this happens very frequently, at least once a year. So in setting up our business, let's say we're going to be a bakery. 
is you are we an advertising or marketing services business no that is actually what my uh, personal agency business is my consulting business let's see what we are are we beauty I don't see bakery here so let's see where I can find something related to it grocery home improvement home services no beauty no and I believe we're gonna call it just a local business we could say restaurant or cafe because we're going to be able to I'm gonna call it the sweet spot and we're going to have some kind of a restaurant in there now we choose our name the name is important because it will help people find you you are going to be putting this name everywhere that you put a call to action for people to like your page you'd like to keep it as simple as possible and make sure that it represents not only your business but someone else doesn't already have that name and because it we're pretending that in this case we're going to pretend but because it has a lo local address we're actually going to put in the local address so we're going to put the sweet spot bakery and cafe and we'll just say it's at 101 Mamaroneck Avenue in White Plains, New York. We will put a zip code later and we'll put a phone later. By clicking Get Started, you agree to the Facebook page's terms. We do. Oh, they won't let me do this without a phone number. So I will have to put in my phone number here. Now Facebook is prompting you to do the next several steps in the page setup. We can add a description, which of course we're going to do. We are going to add a website if a website exists for the business. We're going to add a few sentences to tell what the page is about. And then we are going to put it in a favorite list on our own personal profile. That is because I am you each of us individually will become administrators and we are also going to encourage other employees of our business to add the page as a favorite on their personal profile. This is really important because Facebook messaging does not work as well as it used to. When someone will become a fan of the Sweet Spot Bakery and Cafe, technically they should receive every single update that the bakery makes on its Facebook page. However, Facebook has limited the amount of updates that go to people to a very, very small percentage in the interest of making sure that businesses pay to have their updates seen. So it's really important that employees of a particular company or place or business or organization learn how to add the page to their favorites so they can see the content and share it and become advocates. So let's go through the various steps about add a description. Okay, we, okay, our bakery serves the finest sweet uh, desserts and gluten free pastries um, including a cakes for birthdays and weddings In this section, since there are not only regular pastries, but gluten-free and nut-free pastries, we're going to add the description here as well. And then you begin typing it. Here's where you put the website. So it would be WHTTP, www, if we did sweet spot bakery.com, that's where we would put it. It's easy for people to find your page if you have a unique username. So in this particular case, we are going to create a custom URL. And that makes 
setting up the links so that every time you want to put a badge like our page on Facebook someplace, you will be able to do it. So you can actually shorten the name here and call it Sweet Spot Bakery. Okay? A real is the Sweet Spot Bakery and Cafe a real establishment business or venue? Yes. Okay? Will the Sweet Spot Bakery and Cafe be uh, the authorized and official representation of this representation of this establishment business? Yes. Okay? Facebook is adding these type of qualifications to make sure that people don't misrepresent themselves. Okay? If you want additional help, you are able to find it here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next part, which is uploading a profile picture. In this particular case, you'll remember that you put your face as the picture on your personal profile. Oftentimes, people put logos for their businesses. In the case of the sweet spot, I would put a picture, uh, uh, perhaps the logo, along with having it be custom designed with a piece of delicious looking pastry. Hopefully you will have this particular picture in your computer. If so, you will be able to upload it here. The pixel size is 160 by 160 pixels. This particular picture changes in size when you see your page on a mobile device. Remember, most people look at Facebook on mobile devices, whether they are smartphones or iPads or something of that sort. This changes to 128 by 128. So when you are creating pictures with a, using a photographer, make sure that they have the image rendering in a, the appropriate way for 128 by 128 pixels. The pixel size, so we'll, we'll upload from a computer like this, pick a picture. In this case, we'll move on since I'm not actually setting up this, case, this particular picture. Adding it to my favorites will automatically mean that this will be added in my personal news feed. Okay? And in this case, I'm going to remove it because only simply because this is not a real a, a, you know, a real uh, particular place. The Sweet Spot ba Bakery and Cafe may have duplicate pages. Aha! So some of these actually I set up before when I was doing demonstrations in my class. It does look like it may be here already. And so we might have to actually go back and build something else. That's okay, because we can move forward from where we started. Just give me a minute, and we will go back and try to get back to our spot here. Facebook now allows you, for business pages, to define who may be your preferred page audience. This is for a function that is built into Facebook where they make suggestions to people as to other pages they may like. For example, if someone in the Westchester community decided to like Whole Foods or another restaurant within the White Plains area, and they Facebook may also give them suggestions. You see often when you're on Facebook, many suggestions of friends to friend and pages to pay like. Um, therefore, they may recommend you. So you can begin to say, if you don't have a national distribution business, you can begin to see that, yes, I would prefer that this is recommended to people who live in this location and people of a certain age and a certain gender. Let's say women and let's say between the ages, maybe uh, 25 and up, and that may have certain interests. We will learn to do this and you can go back and continue to change it over time. That will not be a problem. Let's summarize. 
Now the page is set up and we will have a picture here, which I did not include, and a cover art. What is cover art? Cover art is the background image that everybody sees when they come to your page. That is going to be 828 pixels by 315 pixels. If you have a beautiful image, please do upload it immediately. It is also a good idea to change the cover art periodically. So we can do this um, today. We can do this over time. The best size is probably a little bit bigger that can then shrink down from, for responsive design on mobile devices. So you need to have at least 399 pixels wide by 150 pixels high. You also need to have it be in a ping file if you want to write something on it. So you would begin to upload a fic picture that is already on your computer. The next thing I'm going to do is, is to move to my page because then I can show you what a finished page looks like. This is cover art. This is, was designed originally for the, old, the original Facebook page pixel size. When my image was here, this was, it was not as tall. It was narrower and it was wider. This picture used to be here. Notice that the profile picture that I put here was not my logo. I used to have my logo here, but since I have a small business with three employees or three or four, then I found that it was better for me to be able to have an image of myself making comments and posts on the page as opposed to a logo because I represent my business. People know me. I am a speaker. I'm a trainer. I'm a professor. Therefore, I think it's important that my picture be here. You make the decision. If you're representing and managing a page for an organization, you have the organization logo as well. Now, we're on the next video, I am going to take you on a tour of the page. So to summarize, we upload a picture. We've identified a name for our agency. We have uploaded cover art that can be changed and will be changed. Notice there is text overlay here on my cover art. And now we are going to add some more aspects to the functions of our page. In the next video, I'm going to take you on a tour of the tabs. I'm going to show you about the call to action button and then we are going to discuss custom tabs on the left margin. So I look forward to sharing more tips with you in my next video.